new episode of Nonstop Nick Hill. I left uh, Nairobi this morning at around 7.30. Then met up with my group and we have this beautiful 4x4 vehicle behind us which will be taking us to Masai Mara later today. But we're on route about an hour and a half or so outside of the city and look at this beautiful view that opens up right behind me. So we're overlooking the Great Rift Valley, which I'm sure is something you've heard about in your geography classes, but I've never, we never really put an image to it at all. And so this is exactly what that looks like. It's one of the most prominent geographic features on the African continent. And it, it exists here, but it goes all the way up through the Horn of Africa as well. Also, if I am not as enthused as I should be about this whole safari experience and waking up and doing all this, it's because I haven't had coffee yet. So I'm gonna to try to see if I can find um, a place to get a coffee before we head out. But yeah, there's actually a sign here that says the Great Rift Valley from Mozambique to the Red Sea. And it's 9,600 kilometers. So I've at least traveled. You can see exactly, it's pretty much the Rift Valley is tracing my own path through uh, Africa right now. Going up Mozambique, where we went, we went up north to Zanzibar, crossed over to uh, Rwanda, Uganda, Kenya, all the way up through Ethiopia, where we'll be going in Wednesday all the way through the Horn of Africa, uh, Eritrea, Djibouti, and uh, up through uh, Somalia. So basically, I will be following the Great Rift Valley <laughs> through the next leg of my travels up through the Horn of Africa. So after six and a half hours of driving through the entire range of Kenya's roads from the beautiful highways leaving Nairobi to the dirt paths to basically no road at all, reaching our camp, we've reached our accommodations for the next two nights here at Lenchada camp. And it's pretty, pretty interesting. This is going to be my tent for the next two nights. And it looks quite modest from the outside, does not look stable at all from the outside. But the inside is actually quite nice. I'm I'm pretty impressed. Let's take a look inside. It's definitely not bad. I mean, I thought I'd have to pay a lot extra for solo accommodation, but they just gave me solo accommodation right off the bat, and I'm not complaining at all. Though the people I've been meeting so far in our group of six to eight other safari goers are really, really friendly, and I'm looking forward to getting to know them better over, over the next two days as well. Overall, I was quite ambivalent about whether I would do a safari during my trip or not. A safari is almost by definition all the things which are so difficult for a solo traveler on a budget. It's one adventure, it's two distance, it's three uh, accommodations out in the middle of nowhere, wildlife. All of these things are things that do not come cheaply when you're doing them alone. Unlike in Uganda, which has a much smaller safari market and traveler market in general, I wasn't able to find a safari that would run with just one or two people. However, here we've got our numbers. There's plenty of people here and I was able to join a group as a solo traveler and there are plenty of other solo travelers in my group as well. All this just goes to show that, you know, you really shouldn't put a hard no on any on anything. I figured that if I was spending three, four months here on the African continent and did not do a safari, that might be a little insane. For most people who dream of coming to the African continent, their one quintessential experience here will be the African safari here in East Africa. And if I have had all this diversity of experiences on this continent so far, and if I avoided having this one most quintessential experience, I would definitely feel like I'm missing something. And so here I am. You know, generally, I don't like to do these kind of programs because you just want to let the animals be animals. You don't want to crowd around them. You don't want this whole Instagram versus reality situation where your vehicle is chasing an animal, but around you are like a dozen other vehicles chasing the same animal. And that just does not seem nice. It just 
makes you feel icky again. And the same thing with the, the, the Maasai tribes who live here. You know, they use tourism to earn a lot of their money and their livelihoods, which is a great thing, but you also don't want to feel like you're exploiting them or, you know, unnecessarily treading on their land when you're not really welcome. And this is anywhere where there's such a big disparity in incomes between visitors and the local people. You don't want to feel like you're just being a part of any activities which are commodifying people's local culture. With that being said, pretty much everyone I've met here in East Africa has recommended that I do this safari and I'm really, really happy that I'm here. I'm pretty much out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> you hear the wildlife. Just on our way here, casually saw at least four or five giraffes on the side of the street. Just think about that. That's crazy. And that's not even entering the park. That's not even the attraction. That's like the deer on the side of the road. It's just giraffes. And they're so cute. <laughs> But I hope over the next episode or two, you take a look at what it's like to do a budget safari as a solo traveler here in Kenya, specifically here in Masai Mara. I hope it's a great experience. I hope we see what we came here to see. But with that, I'm going to go rest because I think we've got our first drive this evening in about an hour or two. So I'm going to go chill for a bit and then I'll see you this evening. But yeah, check out this tent. It's got zippers to open and close from the outside. It's got zippers for two windows, with actually windows on all sides. You've got a great sized bed here, comforter, towels given, mosquito nets, super, super important. Even in Nairobi, I was like, I die if I don't have a mosquito net. Uh, and then, yeah, you've got shower, you've got bathroom, you've got a toilet, private, all en suite, just for me. And apparently there's also hot water. So. I don't know. I will t give it all. I will give it all a good two days here, and overall, just happy, happy, happy. <laughs>
if you see a zebra, chances are there's going to be another zebra nearby. If you see a giraffe, you're going to find another giraffe nearby. We didn't just see one sleeping lion, we saw three lions sleeping together. And what does that say about our own society? We've evolved away from living together as a tribe, as a family unit, uh, as neighbors, as a community. And at least in my own world back in Seattle, so many of us live alone. And even though we live in close proximity to each other in our apartment buildings, in our neighborhoods, we don't even know our neighbors. We don't know who's living next to us. We don't have that sense of, oh, we're living together communally in order to create bonds, in order to rely on one another, in order to form relationships of trust and reliance. There, these three lines are sleeping together so that one can be on the lookout for any threats and the other one can rest and they can take turns and have that sort of uh, interdependent relationship so that both can thrive. A third takeaway is just how these animals are always on the move. They have a rhythm to their movements. Uh, once they come to a place, they've grazed, they've hunted, they've found their prey. They just then have no reason to be there anymore and they keep moving to uh, new lands, new pastures, uh, new opportunities to sustain their lives. And it's really unnatural how over the at least a couple thousands of years, humans have evolved to uh, remain stationary, to remain settled, uh, to uh, have forgone their uh, nomadic pasts. I mean, so much of humans until very recently were nomadic, until it became almost unsustainable to be nomadic or the systems of, the, of society and the industrial revolution and the agricultural re revolution have made it easier to facilitate our sedentary lifestyles. But that really isn't the norm for life forms on this planet, and it still isn't. Over the past few months, I definitely identify with that. I, I go to a place, I see what is happening there, and then I keep moving on to another pasture, another opportunity for learning, another opportunity for growth. Um, definitely not hunting or killing any prey, but you know, my own human way, just uh, finding my own satisfaction and fulfillment in a place and then moving on and seeing what the next place, what the next place can offer and how I can grow and how it just can make me a better form of myself. There's just something so close to the earth and close to nature about that. And lastly, you just can't help but being taken aback by the sheer amount of beauty. It's not just that the animals are cute. Yeah, they're really, really cute. But it's also about how, how everything works together, how the weather, the wind, the landscapes, the skies, the rain that we saw today all comes together to create so much sheer beauty. I honestly, honestly believe that if a Republican were to come and experience this and travel through this safari experience and see how the world is coming together, there's no way you can be chanting drill, baby, drill, or uh, advocating for fracking or, or denying the existence of climate change or just supporting all these terrible unsustainable practices that not just Republicans but our society as a whole has just conformed to accepting as the norm but anyway thank you for listening to my rant my musings on everything I've just seen and felt and have been thinking about today if you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Here, we don't actually have electricity 24 hours. We have the generator on, you might be hearing it right now, the generator on in the evening, and then it'll shut down at night. And then it comes back on early in the morning before we all head out for our game drives. So I'm just going to take my shower, use the light for what I need to, uh, make sure all my electronics are charged, and then I'm going to get to bed because we've got an early, early morning tomorrow. We've got to head out before 6.30 in the morning, have breakfast before that, and we've got a long day of game drive to see more of this beautiful, beautiful landscape heading straight down to the border with Tanzania where the animals flow across human-made borders just as humans should be able to. But with that, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will see you again tomorrow morning. Good night, everyone. Wow.